Hello everyone. It is a surprise Saturday live stream. I'll try to pull this up on my tablet here. It's really, really dark. Try to get the lighting good in here. So hello everybody. Say hello, you guys never see my face, so hello. I hope some people get to join in. This is like, a, again, this is a surprise live stream. Nothing planned. I'm doing a mom with 18 inch streamers and ribbons and such, uh, but it's gonna be grease themed, so I'm really excited about that. So I've already cut some black and red ribbons, some acetate ribbons. These should be two and three quarter inch width. So the colors are black and red because that's what Rydale High School colors are. But we're also gonna add some pink lady stuff in there as well. So I'm gonna try and go really black and red, everything, try to uh, do minimal white. So I really want a lot of black and red. So even these background ribbons, I'm gonna do in black and red. So I cut these about 19 inches long. And I'm thinking probably a pretty classic look I'm gonna go for. I need to switch my mat around actually because I need I like to work from this way let's see if that helps depends on what project I'm working on I guess it didn't really matter okay so yeah I did plenty long enough there's my 18 inch mark right there, so I'm gonna go a little long, that's okay. I like to use my mat, the grid and the mat to kind of keep me level and straight on these. So I always start with the middle one, unless I'm going for some unique look. alternate the red and black. So you want to make sure you don't go over your backer. I'm working with a about five and uh, a quarter inch diameter backer. So I like them to kind of angle out like this. The first one goes on straight and then I kind of start angling more and more as I attach the streamers. But you gotta be careful and stay on your backer. You don't wanna overflow your backer or once you get it all together, you're gonna be able to see that in the back and maybe even in the front, so don't do that. I know some people attach their streamers straight and then they're really narrow. I don't like that look, but that's just me. I mean, you do whatever look you like. Just because I like, I don't like something doesn't mean you don't have to like it too. Or does it or doesn't mean that it's wrong. Let's see how I'm angling that. I want them to overlap. You want them to overlap that way there's no gaps in between. You don't want any gaps because then it doesn't look good. So just make sure you're staying inside your backer and that you're overlapping. Let's 
See how very cool that looks, just the red and black. So I want to keep that theme. And I really kind of thinking about oops, some fun things I want to do with it, but I haven't started on any of that stuff yet. My only complaint about this stapler is you can't put a full thing on there. I don't know why, you just can't. Let me pull this up on my Echo. Hey Alexa, open the YouTube app. Here is YouTube. And it always goes really loud, even though I turn it down all the time. Mm -hmm. Trust me nuts. The only thing and I can't see on here that drives me nuts too is I can't see if anybody's chatting with me. <laughs> but I, I do get a good view of what, what I'm doing. Try to overlap them about the same each time. I mean, I know it's not crazy important because they're gonna be behind everything. But I still want everything to look nice. And you can go ahead and trim up the ends first or you can wait till afterwards. I do it differently every time. I guess it just depends on my mood. Not gonna go crazy with this thing. Um, I want kind of a classic look, I guess. I mean, that's what I'm thinking right now. I could change my mind. But I'm thinking uh, definitely a military braid. Maybe double it in size so I can loop it. This isn't a crazy expensive mom, it's just a single. And actually she ordered a garter, but then said she didn't want the garter, so. And it's for a girl, not for a guy. I'm gonna have to drink a lot of water. My allergies are really bad, so I apologize. My voice will keep going out. I'm sure you guys, if you've listened to any of my videos recently, you can tell my voice is constantly going out. I got a bottle of hand sanitizer. I'm just constantly cleaning my hands too. Okay. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cut two more red ones and go just a little bit deeper than that. to do a ton of staples either because each layer you're putting on you're adding a couple more staples but one is not enough because it can move around if you only do one so do two staples I really try to pass on everything that I have come across with mom making so you guys don't make the same mistakes I do even if it's something simple like that I don't have anything else pre-cut. I'm serious, I don't have really any idea where I'm going from here. I'm just gonna let it kind of form itself. So let me start this bottom ribbon. I almost always cut the middle one with a V or a dovetail, a lot of people call it. And then you can cut 
these at an angle or you can cut them all in a V and I think I'll do that. Actually, do two at a time. You just wanna make sure you kind of match them up. These aren't exactly the same width, but that's okay. They should be fine. There. So you just give it them, you need to trim them off in some way to make them look nice. It just gives it a better look, more professional look, even if you cut them straight across, but they need to be cut cleanly. So however you decide to cut them, just make sure it's a nice clean cut. Little things like that that make all the difference. It actually doesn't look bad being longer, but I don't want it longer. There. I know stuff like this is just uh, kind of a pain and takes a long time to do these little things like this, but it does make a difference in the overall look of your mom. One of these days, I'm gonna have to bring out my very first, my daughter's very first mom, so you guys can see it, because I didn't even have any acetate ribbons when I made my first mom's. I used grass grains and soft satins and stuff like that. I had, I made a lot of hair bows back then, so I had a lot of ribbons in our colors, but they were hair bow ribbons, so, but that's what I used. And I don't even think I had any braids or anything, I didn't know how to do any of that then. But I decorated the uh, ribbons and Stickers. I used scrapbooking stickers and um, I used glitter glue and we made like, we would take a plain ribbon and put polka dots all over it. it was, so like silver glitter polka dots and, and then you could write, you know, if you're really good, you can write out homecoming or something and glitter glue. So we did all, you know, all kinds of fun stuff like that on them. And then I have like those bottle caps that you know, people use on hair bows, so I was doing a lot of those at that time, and I had like a, since we're a, a yellow jacket, I had the little yellow jacket, so I used that as a trinket as well. I mean, I bought trinkets, but I also used that as a, another trinket, and then I also printed out um, pictures of the little girls, because I made uh, some, uh, some other little girls' mums, and I did a little bottle cap with their picture on it. So I did little things like that that were unique that you don't really see on mums, and I don't really do stuff like that anymore because <laughs> I've got all these supplies and I don't have to really think outside the box as much, but I try to still be unique. So just, you know, things that you don't normally see, it doesn't matter. Just think outside the box and come up with some things that you can do on your own, what you have in your supplies. You can come up with something really fun and unique. <clears throat> okay, I think I'm going to add a layer of glitter ribbons now like I've got some solid red and I think I've got some solid black yeah so I'll just do that and make it sparkly for the next layer and then it'll be ready for some braids and chains and you know whatever unique ribbons or whatever so I have to put um, her name and then I'm gonna put the year and I'm gonna put Rydale High School for Greece and pink ladies somewhere on it I'm gonna try and get like a jacket silhouette that I can cut out on my scan and cut and hopefully do like pink ladies on the back of it. So cut it out in pink glitter cardstock and then maybe have the black on it too, maybe in the writing if I can do that. If I can get, I may just have to just do a jacket. I may not be able to do the writing that small, but that's my plan. I don't know if that's gonna turn out. And then I'd also like to do the grease um, logo. It's pretty neat. You know, it's like car shaped and it says grease on the car. I don't know if you guys remember what that looks like. I think I can cut that out on my scan and cut too in black and red and white. So that will be really fun. Let me cut some glitter ribbons now. Get my good scissors.
red. Now remember, I know I've said this over and over, you wanna take these wires out. Some of them are always, are already sticking out quite a bit, especially if the ribbon's been sitting for a little while without being used. They just kind of naturally push out on their own. But if you have any trouble, just get some needle nose pliers. These are really easy to pull the wires out. Some of them are really difficult. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is because the ribbons will lay more naturally. The wires make them really stiff and then plus they can get bent and then they're gonna hold that shape of being bent. So leaving them like this, they're gonna lay naturally like you would want them to. I like some black glitter too. I've got several black glitter ribbons, so I've got a lot to choose from here. pieces of this. You know how sometimes in a roll they it overlaps because they've ended whatever their machine has ended and they start a new one. It just happened to work out that at the end of one of these pieces was where it overlapped. That hardly ever happens. This is going to be one that's a little bit more difficult to find. This is tedious work as well, but it's worth it. Make sure I do that on the top. So I sh will probably start with this widest one. Let me make sure I know where I want to put them. I did three of those. I don't know why I did three of those. That doesn't match up. Could do another one on each side too if you wanted. I'm not gonna do a whole lot. They didn't pay for bling or anything, but I do usually do some kind of blingy or sports theme or something ribbons as my second layer. I'll be able to use that on the um, backer, on the top backer, so it's no big deal. See how when you get, the wider you get, the more difficult it is to staple there in the center when you start adding it up to the center. I don't think I've that up good. That's my center one. Sometimes you can kind of pull on that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it pretty centered. Sometimes it's better too to go ahead and have your braids and chains made and then figure out where you want these background ribbons because sometimes you'll put a, go to put a braid or a chain on top of these and it won't look good. Especially if you're using something that is multicolored or sports theme or something, you'll go to put a braid on it and you're like, ooh, it just doesn't look good. It's like, you know, you want a contrast. You want it to stand out like the braid or chain and sometimes it's just like too busy. So be careful of that. But since I'm using solid colors, I shouldn't have an issue with that. 
but I have been known many, many times to take something off, take, you know, end up having to take ribbons off and redo them or replace them. So don't worry about that if you have to end up doing that. been surprised at how many mums I've been making that aren't homecoming. I thought there might be one or two here and there, but it's been pretty steady. I just finished some hair bow mums and then I get this order. And I've done a baby shower mum and a birthday mum and I don't know, I can't even think what else. Valentine's mum. So it's been really fun. You guys like the camera right there? I just thought it might look better. You might be able to get a better or different, just having a different view, a better view. I don't know if it's better or not. You see I made the red ones a little bit longer. You'll have to make everything all the same. I kind of like making each layer a little bit shorter be able to see the layers underneath. I know a lot of people do like multiple layers of the acetates and make them really thick. I only do that if people ask for it, but since I overlap them so much, to me it looks full and it's just a waste to do all that ribbon and make it so heavy. But if they ask for it, I will do it. But that's also another way that I can keep the cost down a little bit. See, that's gonna be so pretty and sparkling. And I love this ribbon because it's got the big sequins in it too. It's got the wavy glitter and then it's got little specks of big sequins. I've had that for a couple of years at least. I don't even, I think it might be Michael's, but I'm not 100%. So I guess I will start a braid. Um, Do not have red in the thinnest ribbon. That's crazy. Unless I have some over here. Nope. That's crazy. Hmm. Black. Oh man. The black ribbon's all messed up. Okay, so let me think about what I'm going to do. So I was thinking a military braid with red and black, which I've got um, soft satin. I've got big rolls of soft satin, but I do not have the, is it the 9 sixteenths? The 5 sixteenths. I can never remember. 9 sixteenths. I like to use that for the military braids. Let me show you. I got messed up. But I don't have that in red. I can't believe that. I do have it in a I have it in a three-fourths inch. Or I have the soft satin. black and the soft satin, which I love military braids and soft satin ribbons. I think they're so pretty. 
And when I make military braids, I like to work off the spool. So I'm just dragging it over here because um, I don't like measuring out, I'm trying to figure out how much I need. I just like building it. And it's just one of those you can just build off the spool and then stop when you've got it as long as you want it. So if you're using soft satin, you need to use your hot glue gun. So I'm just gonna fold that over. I'm gonna make a loop and I just want it big enough to push the other size ribbon through. So right there. I don't know offhand what size soft satin this is. It's pretty thin. It's not the thinnest you can buy, but it's pretty thin. I got that really gloppy. Okay, so once you do that one, and this is double sided, so I don't have to worry about which uh, side looks better. So you just match up the second one to the first one, so you know how to how big to make it. glue everywhere. So there's you just want to be able to push that through like that. Let me get all this hot glue off me. I do want to keep a clip in case I have to stop. I don't have to worry about it coming un unraveled. So you just push that through to where it's glued. And then you're gonna make a loop with this one and push it through the black. I'm trying to push up where it's glued so there's not a big knot at the bottom. And I'm gonna make another loop. So it's just constantly making a loop and pushing it through the loop that's already there and then pull it snug. It's gonna be a really thin military braid and that makes it take longer. When you're working with thin ribbons, it's gonna take longer to make a braid. Doesn't matter what braid you're working with. So the thicker the ribbons, the faster it's gonna go. So just keep going back and forth. Been a while since I made a double double one. I'll have to freshen up on those skills. My military braid is, you know, a really basic, simple braid. It's classic, but you can do you can do multiple colors with them and stuff. Uh, Lucy, <laughs> she about pulled it all loose. So you just want to keep going back and forth. See how thin that is? It's really pretty though. So I might make a really big one, I don't know for sure, and make it loop around. But I'm not going to stay on this live stream doing this for a half an hour, I can tell you that. So I'm just going to clip that, put that aside. So I can do a, let's see, what colors do I have? So I can do a, ooh, I can do another classic braid. Let's do a spirit chain. a spirit chain and I just doubled the length. I made it doubled the length and made it about an inch longer than that. I'm just going to find the center there and then make a point. Make sure those ribbons will lay flat together side by side and 
push that down, push that point down. Got a bunch of hot glue here. I can never get those to match up at the end though. I don't know why. And offhand, I don't know how long I need. So I tripled it and then I doubled that because I'm gonna try doubling the ribbons up. See how they look if I double them up. Try to make it, get it matched up here. This red is kind of, uh, it's not real dark. It's not real, um, I don't know what the word is. It's kind of see-through. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's not real heavy. So I want it to really stand out, so I'm gonna double that ribbon. I actually got a tip from, um, hope she doesn't mind me sharing this, All About Moms. She told me on the white ribbons when you're using them on a braid to double them up. That way the white really stands out and it doesn't, you can't see the colors underneath the white ribbons. So you want to take, this is just going to be a classic spirit chain. You just want to angle that. Sometimes I don't get the angle just right. Let's see. Hopefully that's right. Doesn't, sometimes you want it like right up against there. And then sometimes you don't. It's weird. I think it depends on what size you're using. I'm gonna push it all the way up there and see how that works. See if I don't have to take it, take it down. Masking tape is a must for some of these braids. So you just want to fold that over and under the next one. So it's like this. And you want to crease it when it's even with this edge. And that's where this comes in handy after I get started a little bit. And then you want to do this one. But the trick is, and this is where it can be tricky, like where you start if you don't start it right. You want these to match up. Every time you do a, a new one, those in the middle need to match up. It's pretty wide, so sometimes I have get started a little bit first. Okay. I like this because you can still see it. So now, so if you're working with a ribbon that is pattern or only has the color on top, like maybe it's a silver or something and it, it's dull on the back side. So if you double that up, you're going to see that color when you're back and forth. But if you d just do one, then on the, you're going to see that back side on one side. So think about that. And they do make some acetates with patterns on them. And so just be careful of that. So just take it nice and slowly. Make sure your creases are matching up as much as you can. I went a little over on that one. And then again, you want, so you want that to keep touching in the center. That's what, it's gonna make it look nice. Just 
is another classic simple chain to make. If you don't have a ruler like this, a heavy ruler, then just use a hard cover book. That's what I used to use. And just keep working it down to hold your braid or your chain in place. I don't attach my braids and chains until I have them all made. I have an idea where I want to stick them and then I can kind of move them around and decide. And sometimes I end up making too many or I have to make another one. Depending on how wide they are. So you could do as little as three. Uh, five would be fine. Five is going to be common for the size that I'm doing. Unless you're doing some that kind of loop around at the top, then you can do more. But even numbers don't usually work as well. I have done some with even, but it's a little, it can be more difficult. And maybe I'm doing um, like a pretty ribbon that has their names or something. Then kind of think of that as a braid and chain too, because you want that really to be seen as well. do a box braid or some people call it a love chain I'll think about that I'll try to do another video I've got videos on it but I try to update these videos every year sometimes I come up with an easier way to do them or the video just looks better so I try to keep doing, redoing those, even all these braids and chain videos, even though I've done them before. I know I have several whip braid tutorials because that one is so hard to teach. Just because it's so difficult to see it. Something I like to do with these too is to run ribbons through there. Just slide a smaller ribbon through there and staple it at the top. It's really simple. But you can do like sports themed or cheer or whatever. Or just some glitter ribbons. Just make it look a little bit nicer. Adds a little something. Makes it a, it gives it an updated look. Up right there. I hope that can't be seen. Nope. I looked out, it's going to be underneath. Hey, Connie, how are you? I know it's been a while since I've seen you. I've seen you on one of my lives. I haven't been doing a lot of lives, it's been at least two weeks. There's just so much to prepare for. And I'm kind of a spontaneous person. Getting close to the end. I didn't even see, like, I'll see. Okay, so here's the 18 inch mark, but this is going to be for hanging. And I mean, I might be able to use this on the backer or something, so it's no big deal. 
I used to have notes, like notebooks, that I kept all the measurements and stuff, but now I just use my videos. I just go back and look at my video descriptions and stuff. So when I get to the end, I'm just going to give that a couple of staples so it doesn't come undone. I knew tripling was a little over overkill, but I'd rather had too much than not enough. But there's just a simple spirit chain. There's just something great about one of these. I don't know, I love them. Again, I could add some black glitter or some red glitter underneath there if I wanted to. And these are really light, so these are good to put on the sides of the braid or the mum because they're not gonna weigh down. If you put heavy braids and chains on this, you know, on the sides, on these sides, when you, when they're wearing it, when you're holding it up, it's gonna fall in the center. So you don't want everything like in the center. So you'll see that a lot of times I will have these kind of braids on the ends. That way, when you're holding it up, it's going to more likely stay where it's supposed to more than other ones would. So it's another thing when I get all these chains and stuff made, I like to clip them on and try them in different places and then hold it up and say, okay, this, you know, I like the way this looks. I like the way it's holding up. And then I also have my little, um, Oh, I can't get it out. Oh, you're busy with orders? Or... Yes, that's true, Connie. You can. And I don't know if you guys have been to the Dollar Tree lately, but they have the cutest little ribbons now that are just adorable. Oh, here it is. I got this at Michael's. It folds up. So over in the art supplies, and my husband put a nail in it so I can just hang my mom's on it. I think I've shown this in videos before. And then, so when I get to these, this point, I can hold it up and I can decorate it and I can start moving stuff around and see how I like it. This red looks kind of orange on my video. I don't know what it's looking like for you guys. You yeah, know, it looks kind of red there. It just doesn't look red, red to me. I've got a window over here, right here. So that's supposed to be the best lighting to put the camera back against the window. You get the best lighting, supposedly, I don't know. So I'm trying to think, I'm kind of just trying to decide what I want to do with this, what kind of braids and chains I want to add to it. Oh, cookies and cakes for graduation. I want to see them. I hope you put some videos up or some, at least do some little uh, trailers like I did with the pictures of what you've done or some little shorts. Take your phone and just video what you finished. I'd love to see that, Connie. I cannot decorate a cake or cookies. I have tried, I cannot do it. Hi, Marissa. Oh, uh, they do, they have the cutest ribbons and I love it. They are coming out with some really, really cute ribbons. I actually got one out that I know I'm gonna use on this one, this red and black gingham. And they have these in so many different colors. I love them. I'm gonna, you're gonna see me using these ginghams on Homecoming Mums a lot. And then they're coming out with so many different glitter ribbons. I'm so happy. Oh, and one other thing. My husband found these at one of the bigger Dollar Trees yesterday. Glitter iron-on. I don't know how they're gonna work. 
if they'll be okay. I mean, they're small sheets, but they're only a dollar. So I'm excited to try this. Start some, like maybe some ribbons or something. And I will let you guys know how they work out. These crafters, this crafter square stuff, they're just coming out with so much stuff now and I love it. I'm so happy. Make me so very, very happy. Uh, give you a little peek at, I'm making these lollipop ornaments for some mum kits. I wanted to make some, I'm already getting my fall mum kits, or mum kits, <laughs> wreath kits, sorry. I'm thinking mums over here. I'm already getting my wreath kits for the fall because, you know, once like July, end of July, I'm gonna start getting more orders and then August, I'll be crazy busy. So, I'm already getting my Halloween and fall stuff out and up and together. Oh, you guys have those too, good. And I am going to, I wanted to make some fun, whimsical stuff that are handmade by me to put in some of these wreath kits. Oh, thank you, Marissa. So I've made a video of this, but I'm gonna make some different kinds of lollipops and then I'm gonna, I still haven't done the bows. I wanna do a cute bow on the bottom. But you know, most people do like a stick on the bottom, but I want them for hanging on a wreath. So I went ahead and attached a hanger on it. So I'm gonna show how I did that. But I got this fun fuzzy yarn at Hobby Lobby. Of course I had to buy that at Hobby Lobby. It's expensive but it goes a really long ways. So anyway, I wanted some fun whimsical stuff for some of my Halloween wreaths and black and white. I just love the black and white with stuff. But I'm gonna try some different lollipops, some different designs. So that'll be a video that'll be coming up soon. I'm trying to think what else. I'm so mad at myself. I told you guys earlier that I made a bunch, uh, or I made some hair bow mums and I made one for the mom, one for the daughter, and then I made pigtail, like small mom, hair bow mums. And I got halfway through it and realized I wasn't recording it. I had every plan on recording and I was gonna get like the first one done and then I was gonna record the second one. I got halfway through the second one and I realized I didn't record, so I was so mad at myself. And it was for a, uh, it wasn't for like a sports team or anything. It was like Longhorns, it was for, um, I'm trying to think my mind's gone blank. Not like for 4-H or something like that. It was, you know, one of those teams. Um, and their little team name was uh, something Longhorns. But So I did the little Longhorn stickers, and they were so cute. And I was so mad at myself for not doing that. So whenever I get another hair bow mom order, I'm going to do another video because I think I only have one video for that. I'm so lost. What, uh, I wonder if you can do it with pictures. Now I'm lost on, I've done talked about so many other things. <laughs> Where were we at, Connie? I'm trying to think what braids I'm gonna do. Like I said, I might do a love chain or box braid. And then the military braid that I might loop around. Um, I'm just not motivated right now. It's taking me longer this, this spring. It seems like every time I get a mum order, it takes me longer to get like really motivated creatively. I don't know why. It feels like I never got over homecoming during the fall. I usually have this big break and I didn't get that break like I usually do since I'm selling on Etsy. So now I'm gonna have to adjust to selling on Etsy and, oh, shorts. Yes, no, no, I don't think you can do pictures with shorts because it has to be videoed in a certain way. And I noticed that I can only do it with my phone and it has to be like, you have to be holding your phone upright and do the video, it's like, um, so only two of the videos that I put out that I thought were shorts were really shorts. So there's, so I did that. No, I did three videos. I've done three videos now with shorts. So no, you can't do the pictures because I've done those little videos, short videos with just pictures and they don't qualify them as shorts. 
So you actually have to take your phone and video like this. And it has to be, I can't remember, I think it's either under a minute or under two minutes. So it's crazy. Yes, I would do a video. Just do a video with your pictures. You saw those videos I put up yesterday of my finished months from last fall. Just taking me forever to get those out. I like to do those every season after every season. I like to do a video collage, I guess you'd call it, of the moms that I did for that season. So, yeah, I just do the pictures. I just do a collage of all my pictures and make a little video out of it. So that's what, that's what I would do. And that's, that would be good for your customers, too, because I can go back and look at that and um, see what you've done. That would be a real easy way, and then that would get you, like, you can send them that link, and then that would help you grow your channel as well, I would think. I would do that. I would love to see them. So I think I might start on the backer, the top backer, because I'm kind of just kind of uh, about the the braids right now. I don't know what I want to do. I already have those ribbons. Let's see. I've got another. Again, I'm using my ribbon spool ends. If I have the right size, I'll use them. I have. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but this is full of ribbon, empty ribbon spools. And I've already had one full one that I've taken off all the ribbon spools. Isn't that crazy? And then I have a huge box of just chipboard so I can make my own backers. It's crazy. I've got so much. So I shouldn't run out. You're welcome, Southern Cottage. I love that name. I do. I love it. It's so cute. I already got my flower out, my five inch flower, or five and a half. I can't remember. Five and a half, I think. Where's my five? Yep. Five and a half inch flower. All right, so I'm going to do some more of that wide ribbon for the background, for the back ones. And then I'll layer it with like some glitter ribbons and make it nice and pretty. So I wanna cut these at six inches long. There's four blacks, so I'm going to do four red. got this ribbon at Michael's. I don't know that it's a true acetate. It's like it might be more polypropylene, whatever. Um, and it's a little bit smaller. It's two and a half inch width. But they do have it in a few colors. It's really slick. See how slick it is? Like, see, here's, see how those aren't coming. That's the only thing is they're really slick. But I like how red red it is. It's really, to me, it's a really pretty red and really bright and vivid. So you can find some of these ribbons at places. You just got to really look for them. And they may not be, like I said, they may not be true acetates or something, but that's okay. As long as they're close, it's fine. So you can do that. You can do red on red 
And I do have black in this size as well. And I also have one that's kind of see-through. You could put over the red, but it's covering the red too much. I don't like it. this as well. You see, they're not exactly the same. Red, one's a little bit duller than the other. That's the only difference. And see, this isn't slick. I think I'm going to do it like this and then do a smaller black on top of that. Let me find my black glitter. Yeah, here. Here's another Dollar Tree ribbon. There, that's gonna be pretty. This one was from Halloween. They better get some more of those. I'm gonna be really upset with them if they don't. you guys will see that I will glue these on later like I'll make the loops and attach them and then I'll hot glue these on top so it doesn't matter whichever way you want to do it it does save you a little bit on the glitter ribbons because you won't use as much if you do it that way but I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way change it up a little bit so you can layer these where they're all nice and centered like in the center, or you can put it kind of off to one side where it's thin on one side and thick on the other. Or you can angle it. This is something new I started doing last year, like this. And then it's got that angle. So you can just do simple little things like that to completely change the look of your loops. So you can do that for loop chains or on your backers. Just make sure they all match up. And I think I'll put that one off to that side just to be a little different. Actually, I don't like that. Yes, our school colors are orange and black as well, and that Halloween is always the best time. I, I always hate when they have homecoming early at our school because I want it to be after they get the Halloween stuff so I can have my pick of Halloween stuff to add to mom's. Yeah, most of mine are orange and black as well, Marissa, except for, well, I don't know. Once I started on Etsy, I was surprised at how many, how fast I grew on Etsy. So I'm telling everybody, there's plenty of business out there on Etsy if y'all want to get started. Just offer whatever colors you've got and then grow from there. Yes. 
Yeah, when you want to make sure that they're the same, you just put your loop down. And you're just going to match it up. After any holiday, I like to look at Hobby Lobby or anywhere and see what's on clearance and see if there's anything I can possibly use on any homecoming mums. I mean, it's surprising what you can find for all seasons that can go on a homecoming mum. Still need to get that over a little bit. Just match that up, make sure they all match up. Trim that off and it makes it look better, makes it easier to match up. <laughs> Connie. <laughs> Put some stuff on that sucker. Get some cells. Oh girl, the Dollar Trees around here are horrible. I mean, we have a bunch of Dollar Trees surrounding us and uh, within a 45 minute to hour drive, there's a ton of them. Um, but a lot of them were putting out seasonal stuff after the season was over, after the holiday was over. It was ridiculous. I mean, they were putting out Easter stuff way past, like a month after Easter. It's insane. Or you would just see boxes and boxes of Easter stuff. And you're already going, okay, it's past Easter. What are y'all doing? It's, it's crazy. Did you guys get any of that? We only saw a little bit of it, but it's real pretty new um, mesh colors. It was kind of like peachy colors and a different pink. And it was so pretty. Oh yes, I bet you do get a lot at St. Patrick's and Christmas. Um, I got, this is a Christmas ribbon, so it doesn't say acetate, but that's what it looks like. I got these at Walmart. They were on large rolls, and when they put everything on clearance, we were going through the ribbons, and I was like, those look like acetates, and they feel like acetates. They're pretty thick, but they had, they had the green, they had red, they had black, um, they had white. I can't remember. They had some other colors. I can't remember. I got several things. I was so shocked. And they are one and a half inch width. Yeah, anyway, back to those meshes. Those are so pretty. I only got a few of them, but I love those new colors. Even the green was a little bit different. If you're doing a loop chain, you've got to make sure that all your loops line up. I, if you're doing them on here, it's not as important that they're all exact, but I'm just being going overboard here a little bit. But yeah, our holiday stuff, like when you go, you have to go early and get the holiday stuff or it's gone. But like I said, some of those stores, we just could not, but we just thought they were sold out. And then you go after the holiday and realize they had just didn't put it out. So I don't know what the deal is. It's crazy. But really, I have to shop at so many to get enough stuff to make a wreath. Like you, you can find some stuff at this one and then you can find a sign, the signs at another one. And it's like you have to go to so many of them to be able to, to make some wreaths. So I put, I've been putting some of my wreath kits are like Dollar Tree stuff. Almost all Dollar Tree stuff. You know, I have some that are high end, then I have some that are affordable, but I've had a couple people complain. They're like, you can just go to Dollar Tree and buy this yourself. And I'm like, okay, if you can go, but we shopped at 10 Dollar Trees to be able to get all this stuff. 
So if you don't want to do that, then buy it from me. But if you can just go down the street to your Dollar Tree and get it, get it. I don't care. I'm, I mean, I even have a disclaimer in there. This is this mesh is from Dollar Tree. <laughs> Oh yeah, Clarence is my friend too, girl. I love Clarence. Especially at like Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that. I love going to the Clarence. All right. I think I'm gonna do red on red instead of black on red. And I might do like two red on red and two black on red. They don't have to be all matchy. It's raining again here. Is it raining where you guys are? drives me nuts. It's been raining so much. I'm surprised I'm getting this good a light. I can't decide. I think I'll do them all the same. I know. I stay in there for like an hour at least. Just walking around. I gotta see everything. Make sure I don't miss anything on clearance. Because you know how they always have stuff at Hobby Lobby stuck on in caps and stuff that are on clearance. I gotta make sure I don't miss anything. Yeah, you're right, Connie. Some people don't have anything better to do than gripe, I think. What I like about Etsy, though, is somebody leaves you a bad review, you can um, post a message after that review, so you can at least get your two cents in. Oh, I bet your garden does love it. I mean, I'd be griping if it was dry and hadn't rained in forever, so. And I'm not ready for hot, hot weather either, so. <laughs> I don't know what I'm complaining about. My, I'm looking at my flower bed. My flower bed is right outside this. The biggest part of it's right outside this window, so I get to see my flowers. And they look so pretty. They're doing so good. We were scared that we lost, uh, we redid our flower bed we had saved up for that forever and did it last year. And then we got that big freeze and we didn't take care of them. And I was so scared we lost everything and we didn't. We lost like one thing, two things. That was it. But I have a huge, uh, I'm calling huge, it's bigger than me, crepe myrtle. That was my big masterpiece. I had to have a big crepe myrtle. And uh, it's it hasn't bloomed, but the leaves look so pretty. It's growing out. So I love it. Since this red is a little bit smaller than the black, I'm gonna do the black first. But you know what I forgot? I've been trying to be in the habit of doing this because it really helps. I can find a pen or a pencil. Hey, Carol, that's okay. I'm working on the loops for the backer. I've already done the ribbon streamers and I did one braid or chain. So what I did was just put that right in the center and do a circle because that's gonna give me a tip. You see how it's even all the way around? 
the spacing. So wherever I decide to attach the first loops, I will know how far off I've gone on each one. So that's going to be my guide. That's a good idea, Marissa, yeah. It is good weather for that. It's good weather for reading. I like to read, too. That's another way for me, another calming thing for me to do. My dad's it's a dollar. That's true. Oh, thank you, Carol. <clears throat> you guys, my allergies are so bad. Okay, so I'm just going to figure out, can you guys see that circle? It's not real dark. So I'm just going to figure out how far up I want to attach it. And you can take your flower and kind of say, okay, yeah, I don't want it real far, but you don't want them real low. Like if you had attached them too low, and then you went to attach a flower and you couldn't see them, that would be a big disappointment. So, have your flower ready to kind of give you a guide as well. <clears throat> Show you, see if you can see that. So I like to do two staples, and then of course I'm doing my north, south, east, and west. It's just the way I like to attach them. And see, it helps to have a clean cut, too, when you're doing that trick of mine. If it's clean cut across, you're going to be able to tell better where you need to attach it. I'm going to kind of go like this. And then, see, it looks like it's the same. You can take your scissors and say, is that centered up with the hole? Are they kind of level side by side? Because you can tell, if you don't get them pretty even, you can tell. and it's it, So then you got to try and cover that up or take them apart and reattach them. No! <laughs> Isn't that true? That's the only blizzard we know, Dairy Queen. That's hilarious. Oh, gosh, that's so funny, Connie. <laughs> that's true, though. I know, I've never seen... Anything like that in Texas. We've been here 10 years at least. Never seen anything like that. Hardly ever does it even stick to the ground. So you're just learning, Carol, to learn to make mums? That's awesome. Well, we all start somewhere, so don't be too hard on yourself. Take it easy. Just do simple and then just keep adding to it. Just uh, keep adding to what you know. And, you know, don't look at somebody that's been doing theirs for 20 years and say, why doesn't mine look like that? Well, they've had 20 years to make theirs look like that. Like I said, I've got to show you guys the very first um Mom, sometimes I gotta I gotta get that out of my daughter's room at some point. Show you guys, so you can get a laugh at that. I mean, they're not bad. It's just funny, like how far I've come. And I didn't I didn't do anything like this. I didn't do any loops or anything because I didn't know how to do that either. So I think I. Uh, I did feathers, so I took some feather boas and stapled them around the edge of the backer, and I think I did tinsel on some of them. I can't remember if there was anything else. So that's a good way to cover that up and not even worry about it behind the flowers. The reason why I'm trimming that up, again, if you guys missed it, it was just so you can get a better view of, you know, where you're attaching it better. It just looks better. And so I've made a square, pretty much. Let's see. And they look pretty even. It's not perfect, 
there might be, see, that's a little bit bigger there than there, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, just you want them to be pretty close to level. And then you're gonna go in between those. And when you go in between, all you have to look at is this space here and here. How far off, how far out do you want them? And I just kind of do, you can just kind of do your hand like this to figure out how far out. You may want them longer, but usually when you go like the next layer away. Yes, practice does make wonder. Oh, don't do that to yourself. Just keep practicing. It's like um, with wreath bows, you know, I have people that tell me, I can't make wreath bows. I've tried and I've tried and you make it look so easy, I can't do it. I tell them, take the same piece of ribbon, take the same piece of wired ribbon and just keep making a bow over and over. Take it apart, just keep doing it. It's gonna, that ribbon's gonna look like crap, but don't worry about it. Just keep practicing and practicing with that one piece of ribbon so you're not wasting a bunch of ribbon until you get the hang of it. And I've been making bows for years and years, so don't, you know, I tell them, you're just starting out, I've been doing it for years and years. And every year I get better and better, because I'm practicing too. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> Connie, that's so sweet. Well, if it makes you feel any better, though, I've been doing like floral arrangements or like corsages and boutonnieres and stuff like that. I made my own for my own wedding when I was 19. And I made wreaths back then and different things like that. So I've been doing that sort of thing. And I'm in my 40s, so I've been doing that for 30 years almost around there. So a mum is not that different from like a boat or a corsage or something. It's just bigger and you know more ribbons and stuff. So the braids and chains, of course, is different, but like the aspect of putting it all together was easy for me to figure out since I had all that experience with that. So it's not like I was completely newbie at stuff like that. <laughs> stuff that makes you guys feel better. But this is, I think, my eighth year making them mums. And I hated that you couldn't find anything. like. I found a few tutorials. Some of them were like picture tutorials on Pinterest or there were some video tutorials, but, and there were a couple of decent ones, but for the most part, eight years ago, there wasn't much of anything. And I really just kind of had to figure it out on my own. And then I was lucky enough, I think it was my second year making them, second or third year, I worked somewhere as a floral designer part-time and the lady that I worked with had 30 years experience, not only doing that, but making homecoming mums. And so she was, um, she, I only got to work like a season with her, but she gave me a lot of tips and stuff like, um, you know, I was worried because I used the Chanel stems and, and then I, had people tell me, oh, I glue every layer. You're not doing that right. And I was telling her about it. And she's like, no, I do the I do the Chanel stem. If you make a knot and you glue it and you secure it, it's not gonna go anywhere. And so I stuck with my Chanel stem and I've never had any issues. Never had anybody tell me that their mom had flower has come apart. Hi, Amanda, I'm glad you got to join in. <laughs> well, any questions you've got, Carol, I will try my best to help you out and learn. Uh, I want everybody else to be able to make mums. I'm not worried about anybody encroaching on my business. I think a lot of people get worried about that. Oh, oh if I teach somebody how to do this, they're not going to be able to, I'm not going to have as much business or something. I think that's crazy. Look how big Texas is. And it's not just Texas that orders mums. I get mum orders from all over. More and more people are starting to, to come to the mum business or wanting mums. 
and not just for homecoming. So there is plenty of business for everybody. And I want everybody that wants to learn how to make it, whether you're wanting to sell them or with, doing it just for yourself and you, your kids or your neighbors or grandkids or whatever, I want to help you all do better. Thank you, Marissa. Yes, I know. That's why I immediately started. I was, the other day I was looking at some of my old videos and I was laughing because they're so bad. But I think some of the first uh, videos I did were like braids and chains because I was like, they're so few. That's awesome. That was my first wedding to do flowers too. It was like, if I can't practice on anybody, who else but yourself? And I, I was pretty proud. I think I got a book, you know, cause 30 years ago, that was before the internet. But they did sell like book or like, not really books, but they were bigger than a magazine at like Walmart on different things like that. And so I bought like, you know, and they would have like picture guides and stuff. And that's how I learned. funny so here's the basic and you can stop right here you don't have to do anything else but you know that's not me and that's even though I don't have that all take that off you see how much space is still left there no I've got to do more than that you know I have to do more than that I'll probably do some tubing you know how much I love the tubing, guys. Oh, you live in Louisiana. Yeah, I've gotten a few orders in Louisiana, not many. There's a, I know there's a school in Shreveport that I did one for a few years ago. Um, Captain Shreve. So I guess it's, I guess that's something that they do. Yay, Mandy, I know. I was hoping you'd join in. That's true, they can start looking the same. I know I've worried about that myself too. Like how many times have I done the same look? <laughs> so I have to change it. Like I know I do a lot of deco mesh tubing and stuff, but I try to change them up. And that's why, you know, like when I was showing you guys, like just doing your layer and your ribbons differently, like angling them or putting them off to the side, just little things like that will change it up. And I think I showed, yeah, that orange um, minimum backer. I did two and I used similar ribbons and I used similar colors and everything, but I did them I layered them differently just to show you like two different, completely two different looks you could get. Oh, you know Captain Shrew? Yes, green and gold. So I had to, that was the only mom I made for them. And back then, that was like three years ago, I think. So I didn't have any green and gold. I had to go buy green and gold stuff, but it was fun to make. I really enjoyed it. I love tubing and I'm so happy. Again, Marissa, uh, the Dollar Tree. Carrying that stuff, I love it. Because it's it's expensive anywhere else, but Dollar Tree and it just like I've got stuff, I've got tubing from the craft stores and I've got it from Dollar Tree and they are identical. They are identical in every way. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Marissa. I'm glad you're I'm giving you guys some tips that you can use. Let's see if I have any red and black tubing in here. I keep my open packages right here. Here's my black. I'm really trying to keep this red and black as much as possible. Except for the white flower, of course. Oh, Carol, you have to, 
you really have to watch for it. They will just all of a sudden get a whole bunch of it and and then they won't get any for months. I don't know what the deal is. Ask Marissa about it. <laughs> and I'll find some at one store, but not another store. So, and I don't buy everything off the shelf. I mean, I don't take everything that they have. I don't like doing that. So I will buy a few, you know, if I see it, I'll buy a few of each color and save some for other people. And then if I get lucky enough at another one, I'll buy a few there. So I try to save some for other people. Oh yeah, that's the best way to store is in the Ziploc bags. I don't seal it all the way completely though. I don't know why. I had them, I tried hanging them on different things and it just, it's so hard to store tubing. It's the only thing I hate. So I have this big uh, plastic container here. I've got three of them, three of the long ones that the lids, the lids go like this and they have the wheels on them and I've got them stacked under my table and the top one is full of tubing. So I think I'll do my Chanel stems in the tubing and make some shapes. I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, it's, I mean, all of a sudden they'll just have a whole bunch of tubing. It's the weirdest thing. Let's see what colors I've got. I used to have some black metallic ones, but I don't think I have any now. So I've got red. And then I've got silver. Silver looks pretty too. So when you do the Chanel stems inside the tubing, um, use the, sorry, I was trying to read and think at the same time. Use the metallic Chanel stems because they are sparkly and it's going to show through on the inside. You can see it inside the tubing is what I'm trying to say. So it'll add a little bit of sparkle inside the tubing. Can you order the tubing online? Um, you know, you can order some stuff from the Dollar Tree online and have it delivered to the store and pick it up, but you have to order like big quantities. And you can find tubing on Amazon and stuff, but it is more expensive, so there's that. So really, we, just, we go to the Dollar Tree all the time. We're constantly stopping at the Dollar Tree and um, seeing what they got. And then if we go to any of the surrounding towns, I gotta go to the Dollar Tree and see what they've got. Thank you, Manda. Okay, so I can take the black and I could add silver inside. Let's see how well you can see that, but you do get that sparkle. And you can get different looks from different colors. Oh yeah, I like that. See that red and black? This all started, this idea all started with a chain. When I made that heart chain, because I was trying to come up with some new chain to do for moms, something different. And I came up with those heart chains like this. And actually that girl that used my photos, that was one of them that she used was my heart chain. So we can make some hearts. My little lopsided heart. I 
I think I'll make some swirls too. Let's have a little fun with it. Thank you, Carol. It's like this tubing was made to have Chanel stems run through it, I swear. <laughs> you can do this with wreaths too, make the swirls and add them to wreaths as something whimsical. not to bend my ribbons. I'm always smashing my ribbons, my pretty loops once because it's so hard to just keep, you know, as you build in, it's hard to, to get in there with your stapler. And what's fun about this too is you can kind of bend that up and make it more 3D-ish. So I'm going to go right across. Is it that one or that one? That one. Your little hearts, see? I just add something fun. And I also got um, tinsel in a bunch of colors after Christmas this year, so I was really excited about that. I got royal blue, I got red, I think I got green, Connie. So I'm excited about using that tinsel this year. That's the only thing I hate when they do that, when it gets smashed like that. And I, it's not just Dollar Tree, it's everywhere. Every, every brand that I've bought, some of them would be smashed, some of them won't. So I'm gonna do silver inside of the red. Pretty that is. <laughs> yeah. And she's offering that heart chain to her customers as one of the chains. Look, I taught you that chain. I taught you that, how to make that. And you still stole from me. Oh, forgot what I was doing. I'm doing swirls. Okay, so I need my needle nose pliers. And I'm gonna go over a little bit. Fold that over. And I'm just gonna start twirling that. Make these cute little spirals. And then that's the perfect place to put a piece of bling right there. And you can make two of these and have them facing each other. Attach one and then the other one and they look like a heart as well. I found that out on accident. So I suggest everybody get some tinsel at Christmas time. Silver and gold if that's like, you can start out with that because, you know, I do lots of fun stuff with it. But if you find that, I'm going to mess that up a little bit. If you find that you start to put your flower on and you can see some staples or something and you just need a little filler, just staple the tinsel all the way around where it's stapled and that will not only add some sparkle there but it will cover up any mistakes so i love tinsel too and it's cheap 
So you guys know I like anything that's fun and cheap. <laughs> you know, it's not that I don't mind that she's offering that chain uh, to people because, you know, I put it out there, I taught people that, that's fine, that makes me feel good that people want to do that, you know, do something that I came up with. They want to put those on their mums. I think that's awesome, but it's the fact that she then took my pictures of my work and put it up and said, this is my work, when it wasn't. That's what made me mad. And I wondered, you know, had she actually even made one before she was offering it to people? You shouldn't offer... Um, up your services if you've not actually done those services, if you know what I mean. Like you shouldn't offer a chain that you never made. So I had to wonder like all these pictures that she took, had she actually ever made any of those braids and chains? And if she had, why didn't she use her own pictures of them? So I know she's been on my YouTube channel at some point because she, like I said, she's using that braid or that chain. So I know she's been on here. Look how cute that is. See, that's fun. That's true. Eyelash fur. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's a, exactly right, man. I mean, if she had just said, she could have asked me or something or just said, you know, I mean, just the way she did it was crappy. Yeah. Well, if you don't know, Carol, what's been going on is I was on Etsy. I sell on Etsy, but I was, you know, look at, I always go and see what other people are offering, offering on that same kind of thing, like homecoming mums, and see what they're pricing theirs and see what they're offering, what they make and stuff. Cause you've got to, you know, you've got to look at your competitors and see what they're doing. And I was like, um, and I was just scrolling through her pictures and I was like, um, that looks like my picture. And then she had like a picture of a whole bunch of braids and chains. And they were really cropped out really small since there was a whole bunch of them. And I was like, oh, that's my heart chain. And then I went, wait a minute, that is my heart chain. That's my heart chain that I made that I put on Pinterest. And then I started looking closely at all the pictures. And I was like, oh, that's my, uh, I don't even remember which one she had. There was a military braid. There was several different braids and chains. There ended up being, I think, seven total on two pictures of mine. One had several and then one had four braids and chains, and on that one she had three of mine, and then on the other one she had four. And then she was using, um, I don't know if you guys uh, see Terrific on Pinterest. That's what she, her little business is called, Terrific Mums, and I know she had at least one of hers, because she's really unique too, like her braids and stuff, and I was like, that's Terrific, and you know, I was wondering if any of them were actually hers that she was offering. So when you put those pictures, you know, she's she's saying, I'm just putting these pictures out to offer what, what kind of braids and chains customers can get. But I was trying to get her to understand that she's showing, at, when people see that, they're still thinking that that's her work. That she, you know, if you look at that, you're thinking, oh, she's made all these braids and chains. She can make those for my mom, too. And that's lying. And then she took those pictures off my Pinterest page and she cropped out my picture and then used, you know, and then made her own big picture with all the little pictures on it. And I'm like, that's stealing. That's copyright infringement. Those are my pictures. That's my work. That's double copyright infringement right there. And she just couldn't understand it. She never apologized. She took them off, but she was really rude about it and everything. So anyway, what are you going to do? She took them off, so I'm happy she took them off, but. And it's not like she has a ton of sales or anything, but it's still, I thought, she said, 
you didn't sell any of my mom's with these pictures. I sold my own mom's. And I'm like, you don't know that. You don't know that somebody didn't look at those pictures and said, oh, look at all those pretty braids she's made. I'm going to buy from her. You know, she doesn't know that. So anyway, that was that. And I've let it go. I'm still telling everybody about it to, you know, let you know it can happen. So now when I post a picture on Pinterest, I'm having to, you know, put the, like the watermark with my name and stuff. And I hate that. I hate covering up the pictures of my mom's because it does interfere with the picture. You can't see it as well. So I hate doing that, but I'm obviously going to have to do that from now on. Exactly, Amanda. Exactly. It's just common courtesy. Yeah, that's been going on for a couple of months now. I, I do like post, I've been posting in the community tab on my channel uh, about this stuff, but that only comes in, you don't get notifications when I post something, when I put up a post, it comes through, like if you go to your, uh, let's see, take that off. Let me show you. Like if you go to your subscriptions and you scroll through, somebody's posts will be on here, but that's the only place it'll be. It's not like on your subscription. Yeah, I hope it doesn't happen either. And I'm, you know, makes you wonder how many times that does happen to people. And I tried contacting the other girl that she took photos from, but she never responded, so I don't know if she didn't care or what, or if she didn't get the message or what. So I really don't need to add any tinsel, but I'm going to go ahead and add some just to show you guys, and you can do this as a filler. I guess I said that tote only has tubing, but it has tinsel and tubing, so I guess I fibbed on that. And this was just Walmart. Let's see, it's like $4, but I did not spend $4 on it. This was clearance. This was after Christmas, so I don't even remember how much we paid for it, but it was really cheap. But I like it. Look how thick it is. I mean, it's a nice thick one. And you want the ones with wires. They just, it's easier to work with. So you can just wrap this all the way around if you need to, or if you're just wanting to add a little touch of something. That is a wire, so I don't want to ruin my good scissors. You can just make a thing. I like to twist it, so I think it makes it look a little fuller. And then you can just add it in different places to add a little sparkle. a couple of staples and see you just add a little bit of sparkles just something different and fun you can do that with feathers too you know Dollar Tree used to get good feather boas I mean they were thin but they were solid colors and they don't get them anymore so that's disappointing used to be one of my fun finds And they'd get fun ones at Halloween. I don't know if they're still doing that Halloween. They would get like orange and black ones. And so I loved getting those. So I'm just gonna go around and probably add two more. Thank you, Amanda. If you can see no you can't see all the way over there thank goodness I got a big pile of stuff over here projects I'm working on it almost looks like it's homecoming season it's so bad on the table I finally got it yeah I think it was like March before I finally got it cleaned off
I'm usually already making like braids and chains in advance and <laughs> I haven't done any of that. I'm probably just gonna do it per order. Last year I made, um, I had some Etsy listings just for braids and chains, but I don't think I'm gonna do that this year. It was just like everybody would, somebody would order them and I'd be in the middle of so many mom orders and I'd be like, oh God, now I gotta make somebody a braid. And it just wasn't really worth it. So if you guys want to offer braids and chains on Etsy, if you wanna start a business, you can, I did sell several braids and chains. I'm planning to do some more lives too, Amanda, especially when homecoming gets closer. So I can, uh, you guys can see what I'm doing, what I'm working on. And then, uh, and it's harder doing homecoming for me to have time to do the videos, to do the editing and voiceovers and stuff. So if I can do more live streams and I don't have to worry about all that, you know, doing it then, it uploads, I'm done. I can't do anything else to it. Yes, I am so busy during homecoming. I was so worried this last year during COVID. I thought I'm not gonna get any orders because we weren't going to school. And I was sure that most everybody, you know, around us wasn't. Um, well, actually I think ours offer ended up doing, you could, you could pick if you wanted to go or not. But I thought nobody's gonna be worried about homecoming. So that's why I started uh, selling on Etsy because I thought, well, I'll get a few Etsy. Etsy orders. I got so many orders on Etsy. It was crazy. And then I only got like five local orders. It was funny. So look how fun that is. I love it. And you guys see, it was not hard to do. That little bit of tubing was just so much fun. And the tinsel, it just adds something fun and unique to it. Again, you can, since I've got the Chanel stems in there, you can kind of bend those up a little bit. You can adjust them. You can make all these fun designs. Oh, is it, do you like lives better? The only thing I don't like about lives is, um, I'm, like I said, I'm more of a spontaneous person, so I'm not good about, you know, saying, okay, I'm gonna do lives on these days or at this time, and then having all that stuff ready. Like, you know, usually when people do lives, they've got all their ribbons pre-cut and they've got everything laid out and they're already, um, oh, that's not me. I'm just not like that. Oh gosh. That snowstorm was crazy. I just, I still can't get over that. And seeing my dogs run through it was hilarious. I wish that would have happened when my kids were still little though. You know, when they wanted it to snow, they could have cared less when it happened this year, but when they were little, they were always begging for snow. Snow isn't anything unusual for me. I'm from Northwest Arkansas and it, we got tons I say tons, it's not, t compared to Texas, it was tons. You got snow every year. You got snow, you got ice. It was not uncommon to wake up one morning in the winter time and everything to be covered in a thick sheet of ice, like everything, it was crazy. But of course I want to wait till I get my braids and everything attached. You can go ahead and attach it up here and then just leave that open down here to keep attaching stuff. But it, you know, it'd be kind of a pain. It's like, um, I noticed that, you know, you can buy pre-made mums at like Michael's and stuff and they're, they're ugly. But I noticed that they keep them they don't glue them down right here. And at first I was like, why are they doing it like that? Why didn't they glue them down? And then I realized it's so you can add stuff to it. So. 
Can't do that. So this is really gonna be red and black. I really just wanna keep to the red and black. I'll have this pretty white flower on the front. And then I'm hoping I can do like a pink lady's jacket or something. Oh, thanks, Amanda. I'm always worried that people are like, oh, she's so uncoordinated, or uncoordinated, <laughs> unorganized. Lucy wants to say hi. I don't know if you guys can see her or not. Lucy, come here. Say hi. Come here. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera. Lucy, say hi. <laughs> She's the best dog ever. Oh, you guys could see her. I didn't have to turn the camera. I have the worst time with notifications too, with my iPhone. Like some things will come through, I'll set up notifications for some things and then some other things don't come through. And some of the people I follow on YouTube, like subscribe to, I get notifications constantly on some some people and then on other people I don't get notifications at all so it's weird <laughs> she's the best dog she says hi back she really is the best dog we got her for our daughter not last Christmas the Christmas before and she is awesome she's a golden doodle my husband saved up for quite a while. I don't even know how much it cost. I said, I don't want to know. I don't want to have any part of that. I will probably flip out if I knew how much she cost, but she is the best dog, guys. I love her. And then we found out at our local shelter had one they were trying to find a home for, and they had already found a home for him or her. I can't, I'm not sure. We were like, oh, we would have taken her. I think you have to pay $200 to adopt, adopt a dog, but that's so much cheaper than what they are. She's awesome, though, guys. I love that dog. She's always happy. She makes you wake up happy. So you got people still in your photos, but you got this happy dog looking at you, smiling at you, so you can't be upset. So I still don't know what I want to do with the braids and chains yet. Carol wasn't here when I did this spirit chain. And I started a military braid, but it's going to take forever because I'm using a thin ribbon. So I didn't want you guys to sit through that. She is pretty. She gets really matted though easily because her hair's curly because she's part poodle. And she hates being brushed. I mean, hates it. She bites the comb or the brush, so it's so hard to keep her brushed. So she has to go to the groomers a lot. And we try to keep her brushed and groomed so she won't get a haircut because we like her long. Yes. She is a great, great, great addition to our family. We love her. And she always comes up here and puts her paws up here and says hi to me when I'm working. So, okay, don't worry about not knowing how to do any chains. I think I, I said I didn't have any on the first moments that I made. I just did some fun stickers and glitter glue. You can do some pretty ribbons. This is a very easy, very basic spirit chain. Very easy to learn. Um, you may think the military braid that I started earlier, it's, that's easy too. It takes a lot of ribbon though. This doesn't take a lot of ribbon. Uh, let me think. Sometimes I have to go back and look at my videos. I have to look at my own videos for inspiration, you guys. and for links and sometimes if it's been a while since I made one, I have to go back and watch a video because I'm like, now how do I start that? Because <laughs> I used to have, like I said, I used to have a notebook that had all kinds of information on it. And then I even like started 
you know, like the uh, Victory Braid, I had it, you know, I had little short ribbons and I had it started and I would, so I did like one step, two step. So now I've got the videos and I'll have to do all that. I've got way too many playlists, you guys. I try to keep my, all my videos organized, but I've got so many playlists. So there's the spirit chain. Here's a four ribbon military braid. That's not hard, it's just doubling up the ribbons. There's a three ribbon spirit chain. So it's a little bit more complex than the two. So start out with the two. Bubble gum braid is easy too. Just gonna make sure you cut your ribbons at the exact length. Um, a heart chain. There's some different heart chains and they're pretty simple too. Loop chains are easy, but you have to be so careful about how you attach them because a loop, can, loop chain can look really bad if you don't attach them correctly. If you're just like, if you don't line them up right and stuff. Whip, whip braid, Carol, you need to stay away from that for a while because that's the hardest one to learn. It's, it's not that it's hard, it's just so hard to teach because it's round. Uh, circular so it's you can't it's hard to see what I'm doing so it's really difficult to teach that one uh, let's see there's another bubble gum braid Texas chain that's pretty simple too it's just weaving in and out in and out there's another one now those um, name chains are easy to do too they're really easy so that's something simple you can learn first just stick with the simple, basic Victory Braid. That's something I, I like to use a lot of. Those are easy to make, and I think they're classic and really pretty. And you can change up, kind of change up the pattern a little bit, like how you start them out. So I'll probably do one of those. Let's see. There's so many different loop chains. There's another loop chain that I haven't shown. I don't even think I've done one. So I do want to do a video on that one. It's three, but the way they're folded is differently. So I want to do one of those. So I'm behind on the chats. Oh yeah, that's gonna look really nice, Carol. You got some big letters to put on the ribbons. That's gonna look really pretty. I don't know what a big shot is. What's that? Seven eighths inch ribbons are good to make braids and chains with. That's a, I would suggest whatever size you get, stick with that size for a while and get all the colors that you need in that size. Don't be getting, you don't have to get a whole bunch of different sizes and all these different colors, but you do need to have the same size ribbons to make a lot of different braids and chains. So stick to one size. And that's, that's your seven eighths here. So either the nine sixteenths, which is the smaller, which you can make a lot of pretty braids with it too or the seven eighths. For some reason, the seven eighths inch ribbon is more expensive at a lot of places. I guess because it's so popular for the braids and chains that they charge you more for, it's crazy. Yeah, just go through those playlists. I have the one playlist that says um, classic braids and chains, and I think that's the one I was on there. So it was a lot of these, and then there's one that says unique braids and chains. So it was like, um, some of the stuff that I've came up with or just like a different take on classic things. So there was, there's a lot of braids and chains in that one too. So they it, just because they're unique doesn't mean that they're more difficult. You can probably find something. I can go ahead and I don't think she told me if she wanted it pinned on or neck. No, she didn't. She, like, this is for a play. This girl's in a play and she's doing Grease, of course. And so that's what this theme, they're just surprising her with this. So she may not even actually wear it. It's just gonna be like a keepsake for her time on this play. 
So she definitely wants something that she can hang it on the wall. So I'm definitely gonna put a loop like you would pin it on. So that's all I'm gonna do is just to pin on loop. And I like to do soft satin ribbon for those because um, if they stick the pin through the acetate ribbon, if you use that, it's just gonna rip. So I like to do soft satin and then you can either use a big safety pin or you can do a straight pin. Okay. Yeah, classic that classic braids and chains, I think is the name of that playlist. So you'll find a lot of stuff in there. Just go through my playlist. So I've got tons of playlists and I've got them sorted out. There's, you know, I just had like homecoming mom making and then braids and chains, but then I got so many videos that there was so much to go through. I started sub doing like subcategories. So I've got like Pee Wee and Minnie Mums now, and I have wrist mums and ring mums and stuff, so that way you guys can find what you need on those playlists. So you, I know I have a ton of playlists, but that's why. Oh, thanks, Amanda. So let me go ahead and add that loop and show, show that. I don't really do a particular size. I just kind of eyeball it. This is, again, a soft satin. This is a wide one. I do them in all different sizes. It doesn't have to be this size. I do it in a thinner one sometimes. Let's see. So this is about 10 inches. I wouldn't go smaller than eight. Just glue that. Kind of like a V-shape there. You just make a loop like that. And I like to make it a little bit bigger than the backer, just so they have enough room to attach it. I don't want them struggling to find that little loop, so I like to make it decent size. And then after you glue it, I go ahead and staple it as well. So you wanna make sure that when they're wearing it, it does not come off. There you go. And if you're doing a necklace, do two pieces about 24 inches long and then attach them like here and here. I'm gonna be finishing up here in a minute anyway, Carol. Thanks for joining in. I'm so glad you got to join us. And I hope to see you again and hear from you again. Comment on any of the videos if you need any help and I'll try to help you, okay? It is easier on the live stream because then I, you can ask and I can kind of show you if you've got some questions. But thanks for joining in. Let's see, here's the loop. So I'll go ahead and secure the flower and show that. I know I've showed it a bunch of times, but that's okay. Doesn't mean everybody's seen it. So I like to use the same color, just in case, as your flower. These are just the fuzzy Chanel stems. Cut that off as flat as you can get it. Run your Chanel stem through. Sometimes it gets stuck. I've had that issue before. Put at least two knots. Thank you, Carol. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> that old AG and her crafty buggers, that was hilarious. It's gonna stick now, isn't it? I might have to make y'all some shirts or something that says crafty buggies. Okay, so glue underneath. Pull it as far down as it'll go, but don't pull too hard where it's gonna come back through. Just pull it snug. And then I like to glue on top, but very important, turn it upside down. And then squeeze, because you don't, 
want that not to show. So there, it's back to being all nice and full. And let it, you wanna let that dry completely before you go on attaching it, cause it can still pull through when it's hot. So simple. Don't have to glue layers. You don't have to do anything else. That is secure. If you secure that to your backer, this Chanel stem, you are good. You're not gonna lose your flower. So I think I am done for now. I need a snack. I'm tired. I need to chill out now. <laughs> I have to step away from these projects after a while because if I just try to sit there and make everything all at once and it's just too much and I get, then I lose my creativity. So you've got to step away, take some breaks, whatever you, you need to do. And you can hear my voice just keeps going out. Oops, forgot about my spirit chain. So guys, that is it for now. Hopefully we can do another live stream soon. Um, I may be able to do one this week in the morning. I'm not positive. And see, it kind of depends on my family schedule, like because I'm right in the middle of the house and right in the open. This room is open. So I always have to schedule my live streams around who's all home and whether or not I'm gonna disturb everybody. So that's another thing about the live streams I have trouble with. So, in this room I have the best lighting and stuff in here, so I have to do it in here. You keep getting kicked off. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you all so much. I say I just love when y'all chat I love this interaction. That's the best thing about the live streams is the interaction. So I love that. Thank you, Amanda, Marissa, and Carol. Who am I forgetting? Am I forgetting somebody? I hope not. Connie was on here earlier. Oh, you're so welcome, Marissa. You have a great day too. Have fun at Dollar Tree. I bet you get some really nasty people though in there. Not nasty looking, I mean like nasty attitudes. That reminds me, I was in, it wasn't the Dollar Tree, but it was one of the other dollar stores and the lady that was, she was the only one checking people out and the phone rang, she had to answer it of course, that's part of her job too. And she was trying to get the manager uh, to get the phone after she answered it because it was for the manager. And this guy went ballistic behind me. He went ballistic because she answered the phone and then stepped away and, and called the manager's name, trying to tell her that there was a phone call for her. It was crazy. And he's looking at all of us like we're on his same page as him. And I was just like shaking my head like, nope, nope, I'm not with you there, buddy. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry, Marissa. I try to never be rude to anybody when I'm in a store or something. I mean, it's frustrating. Sometimes we get frustrated at people, you know, or situations, something, you know, they're taking a long time or they're really slow or whatever, but that's a human being. We need to be compassionate to each other and kind to one another. That's why I said at the end of all my videos to try to tell everybody to be kind to one another because, I mean, it's another human being, so. Let's try to be sweet to other, each other. Let's just be nice to one another. I don't understand why we have to be so rude to one another. So, see, Marissa's this wonderful person that's watching my videos, and you never know if she's the person working at the store that you're at. So be nice to those people. Be nice wherever you are, and especially after COVID. You know, everybody was out there working. You know, if nobody worked in the stores, then how would we buy our stuff? So... We need to be nice to one another. So Mandy, Marissa, I know you guys are still on, so thank you, bye, love you guys. I will see you next time. I'll try to announce like before when I'm doing a, a live. Thanks guys, bye.